you guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. We're back here at Jaguar Land Rover St. Petersburg, and I have a little bit of a changed up cat for you. This is a 2021 updated, refreshed, changed up Jaguar E-Pace. Our particular one is a P250 SE trim. But before we get into this small, compact luxury SUV, let's talk about what's going on here, Jaguar. That iconic British brand around for so many decades. Now, when I think Jaguar, I think sports car. I think F-Type, I think E-Type Jags, even those phenomenal D-Type Jags that won the coveted 24 Hours Le Mans many years ago back in the 1950s. But you know what? The auto industry is still SUV hungry, and that's where Jaguar comes into play with their smallest of their SUVs. Obviously, they started with the F-Base, this is the E-Pace. Now, the big news for 2021 is we have a bunch of changes, not only to the exterior, but also on the interior as well. And what I want to do with this review is I want to kind of compare. You know, Jaguar has been around for decades upon decades upon decades, and they're a British brand. What I want to do is I want to compare it, no, not to a German Euro brand. I actually want to compare it to a new kid on the block, the Genesis brand, and I want to compare this E-Pace to that new GV70. So let's go ahead, let's dive into our E-Pace, see what's different, and see, is this the one you should be getting over a Genesis GV70? Let's go ahead and find out. Right off the bat, the new styling. It's all starting at the front end of the business. So you're gonna see headlight design, we got a little bit of a reshape going on. You got your double J blade, they call that the double J blade LED daytime running lamp with your LED headlights. I love the shape of the headlight design. I think they did a really great job the way it flows into the fender. Working your way down, we got some functionality. So you're gonna have a functional side air curtain. The only zonk that I have is the fake grill. They should have just kept this smooth, but a little bit of gloss black horizontal bar here. And you know what? It's interesting because if you compare this to the GV70, they did exactly the same thing. They gave us a functional side air curtain but then we had a Zonkum for the same thing with a fake vent in the corner. So kind of interesting how we're comparing those two and they both received the same Zonks in the same exact area. Now working your way down, you are gonna have another fake vent. So we are gonna have to double Zonk it. Zonk times two on the front of the business. I don't know why they put this fake vent down here. Should have just filled it in and kept it smooth. But as we come across this refresh, changed up front fascia, we also are gonna get a new grill. I love the shape of the grill. They did a really great job. And obviously, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. I think when you're comparing it to the GV70, the grill is a little bit sexier on the E-Pace by far. You got that iconic Jaguar badge. No more leaping Jag up on the hood as a hood ornament, but we have that Jag that's going to bite the neck of any Genesis owner, whether it be a GV70 or GV80. We got forward-facing camera, a little bit of gloss black, nothing too heavy. Working our way down, we do have some nice flat black, and the good news is this is fully functional. A Little bit smooth finish here, and some metallic silver that's flat on the bottom portion, but definitely could see the changes and really bringing it in alignment with the bigger brother, the F-Pace. Now, when we get up onto the hood, you get a little bit of a bulge. Don't get that on the GV70. You do get it on the E-Pace here. Nice bulge up the center, stays strong, stays prominent and goes right into the windshield. Now, as we come around the bend, get ready for some big, big wheels. Now, the interesting thing is, is on the GV70, you can get 21 inch wheels as an option. Boom, we got 21 inch wheels on our E-Pace. Massive UFO size. I mean, these things look like flying saucers turned sideways. I do like the design of them, gloss black with the Jaguar badging, and then they went ahead and painted the calipers a nice bread, bright red. It, isn't a Brembo caliper by any means, but the red does pop nicely with the black on the wheel and our red Jaguar badge. You got nice, large ventilated rotors. And then remember, they did do some retuning all four corners for this new 2021 E-Pace. Now, going into the fender where I'm gonna have to zonk it, why didn't they paint this? We got this beautiful color painted all the way through that definitely is gonna be a zonk. And on the GV70, you can get that painted. Fake vent, once again, we're gonna have to zonk it here, but you do have the leaping Jaguar, which is great. They should've just kept this smooth. If it was all just smooth gloss, I think we would've been A-okay with that. Now, you are gonna get 360-degree cameras, color-matched on the mirror caps. I like the nice indentation on the door. It's subtle, 
but it gives some nice element of design from the side. I also like the way they took the sill and kind of just tucked it underneath. It is flat black, which I'm okay with down there, but it would have been nice if everything was just painted. We do have gloss black around the window treatments. You do have a raised roof rail, which is interesting, but it's still very, very low gloss black. Panoramic sunroof, working our way towards the rear. I love the shape of the quarter window. Definitely very sporty for an SUV. And then if you're wondering, well, let's, let's look at the back real quick since we kind of didn't talk about tire size. So these, like I said, 21 inch wheels, 245 on the width, 45 series sidewall. Coming around the back, they did a fantastic job on Sexy. They really got the LED brake lights done nicely, just like the headlights. We're gonna have to zonk this rear wiper, put that, look at all, look at this. All that room up there, it would look great and it would just clean everything up and focus all your attention on the Leaping Jaguar. You have a nice, as the wind blows sand right into my eyes, but we're gonna keep on going. Nice low roof spoiler that extends off the back there, gives it that nice sporty look. And then as we drop down, you're gonna get your E-Pace badge. And what's funny is, is that you actually get a similar exhaust on both sides and then that fake vent again, just like on the Genesis GV70. So we're gonna to have to zonk it, but you do have this lower simulated diffuser shelf area, which makes it look very, very aggressive. But why don't we go ahead, let's pop the hood and see what's powering our jet. Right, guys, we got the hood popped. You do have hydraulic hood struts. I wanna show you something very interesting. There's actually a scoop here for a little bit of ram air effect. When the hood is down, you'll notice the weather stripping around these two openings. Air actually feeds into these two openings, and where does it go? It actually comes out here. And where does this dump, you're probably saying? Drop your eyes down, it's actually gonna seal against the air box. So you actually have some type of ram air system on this Jaguar E-Pace. I find that very, very interesting, but when we look at the engine itself, it's an okay engine cover. It's not the sexiest, but it's also not the worst I've ever seen. What's underneath the engine cover? You're looking at a two liter inline four turbocharged engine, 246 horsepower, 269 pound-feet of torque. It is mated to a nine speed automatic transmission, zero to 60 in 7.2 seconds, quarter mile 15.6 at 88 miles an hour, top speed 135 miles an hour, MPG is 21 in the city, 28 in the highway, and the vehicle weighs 4,223 pounds. When you're comparing this to the GV70, obviously we would be talking about the 2.5 liter turbocharged engine, not the 3.5, that wouldn't be fair. But why don't we go ahead, let's get to the interior and see what big changes are in store for 2021. All right guys, we're inside this 2021 Jaguar E-Pace P250 SE. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, I like the changes on the outside. I can't wait to see the changes on the interior. I have, though, have been seriously considering the GV70. How much is this one? So the way that this one is optioned with those massive 21-inch manhole cover size wheels, you're looking at $55,600. Let's see what you get for the money. To the door panels. I do like the two-tone motifs, so you're going to get black soft touch material. Then there's this off beige. I personally wouldn't buy it, but I do like the way it's not just a sea of dark material. A Little bit of flat black, some nice aluminum style finish. You got the Meridian optional sound system and then a super sized door pocket. Easily fit four British scones and a cup of tea in there. That's how large it is. Now going from the door panel to the dash, same two tone style going on. Stitch work is tasteful. This is all new for 2021. I don't know if you heard my voice change a little bit there. I did that on purpose. That's a new infotainment system over 11 inches, smack dab in the center. Gonna give you perfect visual pleasure. Navigation, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It's using the new Pivi Pro system. So it's very intuitive, very quick to, to uh, access. One, two, three, you're already there. Let me throw it into reverse. This is the bummer. You got over 11 inches. It's 11.3 inches of screen but your backup camera doesn't take up that whole size. Would be nice to see it just a little bit larger, but you do have trajectory, and there's our 360 degree camera, and the camera quality is super clear. It's like my eyeballs are taped to the back of the vehicle and I'm looking out the back. That's how clear it is. Put it back in the park, and then eventually it's gonna go back to our home screen, but let's continue. Working our way down, you do have dual climate control. It is that system of using the same knob. So we have our temperature, 
what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull to adjust the blower fan, and then you're gonna push to adjust the seat. Now, we don't have ventilated seats in this option one, just heated, but I'm gonna shut that off because it really is hot. You can get ventilated seats, but it is gonna cost you more money, and then we're right back to where we started. You do have your dual climate control, a little bit of AC buttons here with the Jaguar name, established 1935. Yes, that was a long time ago. Wireless charging. You do have a USB all the way down in this area, and there's a space for a Snickers bar, maybe a Three Musketeers, maybe a whatchamacallit. Shifter for the nine-speed automatic transmission. I do like this neoprene material with the stitch work, just a little bit of gloss black with the E-Pace. You have your mode selector switch, which I'll show you more of that when we go into dynamic mode. Volume control knob, little tiny oh crap panel for your passenger in case they're gonna crap themselves. Two cup holders, and then here is your Jaguar key fob. It's a good size, a good weight. Spin it around, there's your buttons right there. Hard armrest, as hard as a plank of wood. But the good news is you open it up, you got a USB, USB-C, and you could put a little mini light-up globe in there. So you could use the power source, little mini light-up globe so you could tell where England is if you don't know where that is on a globe. Come over to my house, I'll show you. Seats, you got the leaping jag on the headrest, nice soft leather, the stitch work, perforated material, full electric assist for the passenger, obviously also for the driver. And even though this is a compact, I don't feel compact in here. I got plenty of headroom, we got that nice, massive panoramic roof. Look at that. Bam. Great size. Close it back up because, like I said, it's hot as heck today. But why don't you come over to the business end? I got a revised sexy steering wheel I want to show you in our e All right, guys. Business time on the driver's side. You do have a simple aluminum sill plate. has the Jaguar name in there. Kind of reminds you what car you bought. If you forget, you do have your seat controls that are easy to get to, that lower lumbar. All that mid lumbar feels great. You got three memory seat settings. Like I said, plenty of headroom steering wheel. New, updated, two piece leather, looking sexy. You got the leaping jag there. It's gonna pounce right on your lap. I like the way they hollowed out the spokes and you're not gonna believe this one. Not only do you have paddles behind the steering wheel, but they're actually metal. We've been in vehicles that cost well over $100,000 that don't have metal paddles. So that's gonna allow you to go up and down the nine speed automatic manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel, and then the dash. You got 12 inches of TFT digital display. Very, very clear. It's got a picture of an E-Pace there. I wish it was white like ours, but you could go into the different modes. So we're in dynamic. Look, everything goes red, blood, race. You're out for blood. That's why it's red. Comfort, eco, and then you got ADSR. And if you're wondering what that is, that's like a snow mode. So that's good for people up north with our all-wheel drive system. No head-up display in this particular trim, but you do have those massive screens. Let's go ahead and get into the back seat and see if your passengers are going to have some massive room in this smaller E-Pace. All right, guys, back seat time. And you know what? For a compact SUV, actually not too shabby. Remember, I'm six feet tall, plenty of headroom, even with the panoramic sunroof. You can see you got your coat hanger. After a hard day at work, you can hang your jacket on the back of your seat. We do have those pesky cargo nets, so I am gonna zonk that, and plastic, which on a Jaguar at this price point should not be that way. But you do have your rear AC and a 12 volt. Would have been nice to have a USB, but at least they gave you a 12 volt. You could put your Three Musketeers in that holder down there. I got my own cargo net. The problem is, is that if you put your cookie cake in here, the cargo net's gonna cut into the cookie cake and it's gonna just make a mess. So just something to be weary of unless you put your cookie cake on your lap, which I don't know, that's like melted chocolate. I don't, maybe that sounds good, I don't know. Maybe you could sit on it too, but I'm not doing that. Pull the armrest down, semi-soft, two cup holders, flip it back, but why don't we go ahead, let's get into the cargo area and see how much room we have in this e pace All right guys, cargo area time. You're gonna hit the button right underneath that leaping jag and what do we got? Nice electric assist. You're gonna get a decent size on the opening, decent size on the depth. There is a 12 volt that's conveniently placed for you right there. And the other big news is that we have that emergency cargo net for our box of Twinkies on that trip that you're taking so you don't get hangry. What are we looking at? With the seats up, you're looking at 24 cubic feet of space. Can you fold the seats down? Sure. The only challenge is you gotta reach over to get to the button and then what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to push with all your might that you have. So 
push and then push back down and now we maximize the space. The bad news is they don't lay totally flat, but this does allow you to get some bigger items, especially on that crazy Costco run. But if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go on throttle in this Jaguar E-Pace and see how it drives. All right, guys, we left Jaguar Land Rover St. Petersburg. We're in this 2021 Jaguar E-Pace, that P250 SE. Right away, I really love the changes that they made to the interior. The larger screen, that beautiful digital TFT display is phenomenal. And really, everything is well sorted and laid out in here, which definitely is going to help with the overall driving experience. Steering wheel is very, very sexy. One of my favorites currently available on any car. And then having those surfboard style paddles behind the wheel, I mean, they're ginormous and they're metal, which gives it a nice high end feel. And that's the thing is, everywhere you look and touch in here, it feels much higher end than last model year. Now seats, are pretty comfortable. I would like the bottom portion just to be a little bit longer for the hamstrings, but other than that, lots of great comfort, plenty of headroom in here, and of course you're gonna have wireless charging, the Apple CarPlay, the Android Auto, and all those other good features, including the nice massive navigation. All right, pulling away from this light, we are in dynamic mode, and I have the shifter put on sport. That lets you know with the giant S and the checkered flag, which dynamic really is that sport mode. But uh, we are going to actually, I'm gonna use the paddles to shift with this E-Pace. But if you're ready, I'm ready. On throttle, here we go. Nice smooth shifts. Really, really handles well. That's where, you know, the driving dynamics in this E-Pace is really gonna show itself how the actual driving and just feedback is, it's really, really great. Even in this smaller Jag SUV. Downshifts are smooth. Back on throttle, here we go. So you're getting some pumped in sound to kind of invigorate the experience. There is a more powerful version of the E-Pace, just like there is a more powerful version of the Genesis GV70, but really just smooth, comfortable, all four corners. They do a great job on suspension damping, the compression, the rebound. And I really just think that for somebody who wants to get into the Jaguar brand, this is that entry gate level of a way, that gate entry into the Jaguar brand. And then, hey, you step up after this to a Jaguar F-Pace SVR. Sounds good to me, sign me up. But visibility is great out the front, great out the back. You got all your safety features, of course, blind spot monitoring, everything. I'm gonna put it back into regular just drive mode and see how the uh, the transmission behaves. But on throttle, here we go, drops down and we are off. You are waiting a little bit for the boost to kick in, but other than that, power comes on. Ride isn't too stiff, to be honest with you, even with those 21 inch wheels and the lower profile tires. But just a smooth, driving, compact luxury SUV. And for somebody who wants something different, you know, everybody's going BMW, everybody's gonna go uh, Mercedes Benz or Audi, but now more people are going to Genesis, and I think that Jaguar is still wide open to have that unique driving experience. Sound deadening in here is really nicely done. Not a bunch of wind noise, even not a lot of road noise with those massive wheels and tires on here. Um, but I think, like I said, you know, it's the price point is where it comes into play. Uh, I really kind of fell in love with the GV70, to be honest with you, and of course you're going to be able to get a lot more SUV for the money. It's just, do you want that Jaguar brand name and all the tradition and history that's connected to it? That's what you got to ask yourself. But hopefully this gave you a nice overall feel of what is new 
What has changed for 2021? We're gonna get back to Jaguar Land Rover St. Pete and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split second. All right guys, it's been another great day here at Jaguar Land Rover St. Petersburg. I definitely wanna thank Miro, Jeff, and the whole crew getting us this E-Pace changed up for 2021. When you're comparing it to the GV70, I would love to know what you think. Which way would you go? E-Pace or GV70? Or would you go with one of those other German Euro brands? Put it in the comment section, but definitely Jaguar has raised the level of the game of this E-Pace. But if you wanna keep seeing SUVs, luxury SUVs and everything else SUV-ish, leave a comment in the comment section. If you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rise family. If you wanna help us keep making great content just for you and the channel, click the first link in the description, become a Radies Rise Patreon member, click the second link, get yourself some Radies Rise merch. I gotta give it up to the coolest cat of all, Lori, the videographer of the year, working that camera like a champion that she is. Show her some love in the comment section. They should have videography in the Olympics. She would bring home the gold. Thank you, Lori, for all your hard work. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.